Bruce is four and um, he was born 2015 at 34 weeks. So he was premature and um, he really had quite a tough start. Mm -hmm. He was taken away from me, I think, very quickly after he was delivered. He had low oxygen, um, jaundice, he was tube fed, he was in the NICU. Very, very difficult start, I think. And he had a lot of drugs, a lot of antibiotics. And, you know, when I think back, I should have stayed with him all night and, you know, in the, in the NICU. But anyway, he came home with us after a couple of weeks, but he was a very, a very anxious and very uneasy baby for the first 12 to 24 months. And I guess he wasn't developing like he should have been. And I think because he was my first child, I didn't see that. Um, I didn't see that he wasn't doing what really what he should have been doing. And it was my mum who actually saw it first. So, and then I guess as well, <laughs> there's that little bit of denial that, you know, we put a lot of it down to the prematurity, that things would kind of catch up on himself and he'd get better. You know, like we saw like a, a good few specialists the first year, you know, just in terms of trying to get all like his eyes, you know, better. We saw ophthalmologists, you know, we had hearing tests, you know, was everything OK? And, you know, I so around about kind of maybe 12, 12 to 18 months, we started realising there was things kind of weren't catching up. And I'd had a couple of friends that had babies around the same time. And again, I, I kept putting it down to, to prematurity that he will catch up, but he just, he wasn't, he wasn't getting there. He, he wasn't speaking. Um, he wasn't doing the things that I guess he should have been doing that time in terms of smiling at people's faces and eye contact. Um, you know, he was interested in toys, but kind of not in a typical way, I guess that you'd expect. Um, and he didn't have his first, he didn't speak his first word, which was no, until he was 27 months. So quite delayed. Um, he used to, he didn't smile until it, actually he was five months. You know, there was, he was just lost. He, it was like he was born too soon and he just didn't know he was here. There was just, you know, and for a first, first time mum, you know, like it's such hard work at the beginning that five months even for that smile to come, to actually start the bonding, if I'm honest, really for me, you know, because he was so hard, such hard work. But then there was nothing there. It was just, you know, he had a, he had a very, very tough start. But um, I guess around two by the time he wasn't speaking we started uh, speech therapy which was 30 minutes for you know once a week honestly that probably didn't make a dent in anything we brought him to a pediatrician um, who said he was absolutely fine <laughs> uh, you know there was it was just a very difficult time. We, we tried him in a couple of crashes after he, after I went back to work and he simply couldn't cope. He used to scream going in. He would be inconsolable the whole day. It was just too much for him. He was just not ready. Not ready for the world, I think. And needed me really, I guess. But we got a childminder into our home anyway and he definitely calmed down. But, um, yeah, there was still, obviously, you know, you start the Google searches for the autism and <laughs> all of the different symptoms and whatnot. And we decided to get privately assessed. And just a month before his third birthday, he got the autism diagnosis. It was relief in one way, you know, but in another way, it was just devastating. You know, there was, I think like a grief, you know, that I went through certainly, you know, 
and, and Paul as well, his dad. But, um, you know, and um, I think you just mourn really for the child that you thought that you were going to have versus this child that was there but actually wasn't really there and wasn't happy. Like, he wasn't a happy child. He was just anxious and uneasy and was struggling and I really just didn't know how to help him. But anyway, after the diagnosis, the worry became less about if there's a, you know, is, is there a problem to actually, okay, there's a problem, let's deal with that and now what are we going to do about it, you know. So it, it, it did become a little bit more hopeful, you know. So, like, there was no one person to actually sit me down and say, right, Helen, this is, this is the story. This is now what we're going to do. This is what you should be doing. And this is what I would look into. You know, all the, like, we were on the HSC waiting list, which was, you know, humongous. So we weren't going to be uh, assessed by that for a long time. So we obviously went privately. But there was no one person I found that actually had everything really or kind of had a whole picture you know um speech therapy gave me a couple of sheets and i did a few bits every week and you know ot well he's got low tone in his in his arms you know do a few things you know you're <laughs> like i felt very much on my own you know and like i just started researching things you know things to do alternative things maybe um we looked at diet we removed gluten and dairy, which brought him on actually very much so. Like within within a week of taking out gluten, he'd up to his third birthday he'd had about thirty to forty words. And once we took out gluten, like literally the week after, the words just start coming. And like do you think a paediatrician would tell you that? Do you think anybody would tell you that? Would you try this? Now, maybe it doesn't work in every single case, but it certainly worked in ours. <laughs> like, it was mind-blowing. And um, then we were put in touch with a speech therapist who, was, um, who worked in an autism centre in the US who actually started coming to the house that summer and... Um, Basically, what I got from her was actually learning how to, to, to teach Bruce, how to speak to him, how to get down to his level, how to, you know, all those floor time strategies, the, the hand and speech, uh, you know, the course or whatever it is. They bought that book like you really like I. I wasn't trained in any of that. It's, it's not my background. It's not what I did like <laughs> at all to suddenly now being, you know, cheerleader number one for Bruce and having to educate myself, you know, having to read books, having to, like, I used to jump on mothers, like, at, you know, like anywhere, like waiting rooms and and what are you doing now? And is that working? And what else have you found? You know, because that's how you got the information, really, like. Um, and, um, so things definitely started picking up that summer with the diet and with me changing my approach. Because I think with speech therapy, you know, if, if you're waiting for the speech therapist to help for half an hour a week, like nothing's going to happen. I needed to, to, to be with him the rest of the week and be working with him every day. And that's what we did. And we started seeing results. And then um, we were very lucky that Bruce was... Um, accepted to Jonix, which is the autism preschool. And at this stage, like, he just, he couldn't go with people. He couldn't, he, he really just, I, I was so anxious about putting him into the school because I just didn't know how he'd cope. But he got on brilliantly. When he actually saw people who were trained and who were able to deal with him, and his teachers were such a support to me in, teaching me how to deal with him at home and how to, you know, and how to manage him because there was so much going on that, I mean, I like I always say, like you have to do more training to get a, a license to drive a car than, than you do to have a child. First of all, to have a child is typical, but to have a child with additional needs 
and extra issues like there's no training there's just you really just like we're lost you know but um and so yeah around that time that was september and we started um we started doing a, a few therapies craniosacral therapy which i thought really really helped um you know things that i guess if I'm honest, I probably would have rolled my eyes and sniggered at before, <laughs> you know. Uh, but that was before, this is now. Um, I'm open to absolutely anything. I'll stand on my head during the full moon if it'll help, you know. And the proof was in, the, was in, was in Bruce. He started, you know, really, really kind of coming out of himself. And we were very lucky to get a place for equine uh, occupational therapy. It took Bruce, I'd say, two months to even get on the horse. He was so terrified. I needed to be with him every second of the way. We had to have motivation tools, everything. Um, but I remember after the first session of that, he was like he was regulated. He was calm. The it was like he was able to kind of, you know, he was he was talking more. You know, he was chatting on the horse, which was just <laughs> like. What is this horse doing kind of thing but you know it was it was brilliant and then um i did a course at the hsc on the hannon program as well which was actually the one thing i really found about hannon well that sorry that course with hsc was that they had so many videos of kids and of parents and i think seeing that and kind of watching what they were doing just you know was I just learned so much more like you can read a book but when you kind of start seeing things you know which was excellent um and then I started talking to one of the other mums and she um she mentioned child development center and Karen and of course like within about two seconds I was like you know googling <laughs> who is Karen and what is this center and then I saw that it was in Galway and obviously I'm in Dublin so I initially said oh we'd have to go to Galway and even though my husband is from Galway you know it just would have been a little bit um more inconvenient I guess but then obviously um it was Gillian actually she said oh no she comes to Dublin and I said okay so I looked up the lift and I said gosh this sounds fantastic okay this is now our next you know big move and like I felt uh, I felt last year 2018 for us was about diagnosis, was about dealing with that and actually starting the work, you know, starting to put, I think, what Bruce needed to do and where he needed to go into place. And then I felt like 2019 was the time for big programmes, you know. I would kind of, I wasn't getting, I think, and certainly he wasn't getting, I think, what he really needed or, or I guess getting the most out of the therapies. So it was time for big programs and big changes. And it kind of just feels like Karen just came around. <laughs> when we were ready for it, because I don't think we would have been ready for it last year. I think we were dealing with too much else. Mm -hmm. But anyway, <clears throat> so um, made the phone call and we had our assessment and I was going in guns blazing. I've decided now, Karen, we're going to do the lift. And honestly, Karen was so warm, clearly so well educated and so experienced. And Karen was the first person who saw Bruce and not four-year-old uh, autism diagnosis, sensory disorder, da, 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 actually looked at him as a person, as a little boy that he was, and started, you know, like up until then, it had all been about what's wrong with Bruce, what can we do? You know, it was really like, Whereas I feel Karen looked at him and said, yeah, he's got, a, he's got a good bit going for him now. Let's kind of 
you know, see what we can do with this. So I said, great, when, when can we start the lift, Karen? <laughs> and Karen, in her very uh, intuitive, and I think Karen has an excellent way of talking you around and putting ideas in your head that at the end of it, it makes me feel that I have come up with this program and that I'm empowered now to make, make this choice. And what I felt Karen did for me was to actually guide me. You know, I've been on my own with this for so long, you know, and, and not really knowing that I was doing the right thing or going in the right direction. You know, there was no one to kind of, you know, kind of say, oh, look, I can definitely see progress here. Let's have a review. Let's, let's, let's try something different, you know, whatever. So anyway, in her very gentle and uh, encouraging manner, <laughs> uh, Karen talked about um, a holistic approach to Bruce. You know, we, we'd had an OT person, we'd had an SLT, we'd had cranio, we had a pediatrician. There was no one talking together about Bruce as a person. They, they all had, in fairness, they all had their own specialities. But what I found with Karen was she said, you know, would you look at phytobiophysics? She noticed the dark circles under Bruce's eyes. And when I look back at photos, like how I didn't see how bad it was, I don't know. And his pallor, he was so pale. And the eyes, the eyes were like, I've just gotten off a roller coaster. You know, he was just lost. And um, at first I was like, biophysics, right? Phytobiophysics, right. <laughs> I see. And um, I guess, as, as we all do, we Google it and we start looking it up. And because I felt so assured with Karen's approach and with um, how she looked at Bruce, uh, we decided to go to London to actually see Diana Mossop because the postal consultations are fantastic. But I guess I was so hopeful after seeing Karen that I would have taken him to Hawaii, had she said. <laughs> you know, I was really kind of, I, I, I was actually hopeful. Sorry. First time, you know. And um, we went over to see Diana and um, she was another lovely person who blew me away as well. And again, you know, she did things like kinesiology. She looked, she kind of, um, like I brought Bruce to see her so he would see her. And of course he was awake and delighted with himself the whole time on the plane, fantastic. Two minutes before we rocked up to Diana, he fell fast asleep. But actually I felt like that was the way it was supposed to happen because he, she, she was able to, test him to touch him to kind of actually ask him ask his ask his body you know do you need this what do you need it was fascinating what she was doing like <laughs> and I have to say like I talk about pre-Bruce and post-Bruce Helen like pre-Bruce would have been like what is this post-Bruce Helen was like gobsmacked to the point that I've actually gone to her myself now she's phenomenal but anyway, so he slept through the whole hour, which meant I got to talk to Diana. I got to, and, and she got to ask Bruce, you know, all of these things. And we, we, got a, we got a program together. And the second we left Diana's office, he woke up again. Like it was just bonkers the way it happened. So we started those. I actually, like everything, thought he wouldn't take them, you know, because he would have been quite restrictive in terms of food and you know putting things like different trying different things and um but anyway he loved them yeah I guess because they're sweet <laughs> he takes them three times a day and we uh, came back to Dublin and we started the therapeutic listening again I I think I told Karen at the, at the assessment like he's not going to wear these headphones <laughs> like I don't know what we're going to do. Are we going to have to do it in the sleep or what? You know, but surprisingly, 
he was fine with it. And he, like, that was the first kind of, like, oh, okay. He clearly is okay with this, you know, um, and, and he was open to it. And since then, like, obviously, we're a couple of months in now, he obviously knew that it was helping. He definitely, you know, he definitely knew, or it was, it was making him feel better. Um, now, that being said, we did have some dysregulation. <laughs> uh, he flipped out, honestly, he flipped out. He went bananas. He became aggressive. He started biting. He was screaming at me, crying. Everything was just too much. It, you know, um, he, and actually I read then about that and that means it's working, <laughs> you know, so you kind of take heart in that, like the combativeness, it was like a two year old toddler went berserk and he'd never really done that, but I guess he should have done that, that rebellion, that kind of, you're not the boss of me type thing. And, you know, everything I asked him to do, no, and it was screaming, <laughs> like, and I was like, dear God. But then I think really, after a couple of weeks, well, what, what was great was I went back to Karen, and Karen was excellent. She said, look, do this, do that, and it helped. It, it, we slowed, we slowed down. Because I guess, I mean, he's only four. Like, you have to go at the pace that he's ready for as well. And um, then we actually started seeing some real changes. And he was calmer in himself, more eye contact. Um, he was connecting to others more outside of myself and Paul, outside of the family. Like, he... <laughs> He always, he always kind of talked to them, but the difference that I saw was that he actually wanted to talk to them. Like that motivation had never really been there. Um, so like, it was definitely brilliant. Um, and then we had our first review. And I think it's like when somebody you haven't seen in two months loses weight and you go, wow, you look fantastic. Whereas, you know, someone who sees them every day doesn't actually see it. So it was a really good, for me, like a sounding board. Like it was a review. And Karen could literally look at Bruce and be like, okay, the dark circles are actually beginning to clear. Um, he didn't flip out when he went into the room with Karen. He was calmer. You know, it wasn't like, we used to call him Hurricane Bruce. You go into a room and go, <laughs> like, just flitter everything. <laughs> and it would be like, dear God. No, he was he was sitting down. He was kind of, you know, looking at toys. He he was happy to sit at the table with Karen and myself. And, you know, it was, but it was great to see an external professional see that, you know. Um, and we reviewed the music and I think we did another couple of programs. Yeah, I changed it up a bit because, you know, whilst I had read about the music, I still, I still don't fully understand it. All I know is that it works. Well, it seems to be working so far anyway. And um, we went to see a homeopath, um, which actually was amazing because I went for Bruce and I think Karen must have known this but it actually ended up being about me. <laughs> and, you know, like obviously being a mum or Bruce's mum, he feeds off me. Like if I'm, and I've seen that, like if I'm having a bad day, he has a bad day. If I'm, if I'm well, he's well. So um, uh, after seeing um, Monica, um, I felt a million dollars. Yeah, it was a real, <laughs> it was brilliant. So, um, and then over the weeks, I guess, the reports from school, like we get a little journal in every day, they started, like, 
I would have a lot of anxiety some days going downstairs to collect proof from school going what has he done and I'd have to sign incident report forms uh, because he would have bit another child or he would have bit a teacher. Now they're well able to handle it, they're absolutely, they're professionals, they know what they're doing but you're just going Christ almighty like he would have bit his little sister, she's only a baby you know but the report started being Bruce had a super day Another great day with Bruce. Bruce loved X, Y, Z. Bruce has started calling his friends by their name. Bruce <laughs> Bruce can pick out his teachers and talks about their names. Bruce, you know, like they said to me, oh, something that we taught him yesterday, he's doing independently today. You know, just like, like just mind blowing stuff mind-blowing and I noticed it at home mainly his mood he is in flying form like and what what I really see and I think Karen saw it as well was actually his personality coming out because he had been so lost and so clearly struggling you know and it breaks my heart to actually like the fog lifting you know and things that I was teaching him, he was learning. Um, and bearing in mind, this is only two months. Like, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm not one to embellish and I'm certainly not being dramatic, but like, all I can say is what happened to Bruce. Um, he just, like, he's learning like no one's business. Um, because I think that, that just he's clearer, he's able to take in information. And the sentences started getting longer, the words started coming. Things, you know, I would have said to him on Monday, oh God, no, don't, don't, don't go into the deep end of the swimming pool. And then on Friday, he'd be reading a story going, oh, the dinosaur is in the deep end, mummy. You know, like, <laughs> like genuinely, <laughs> genuinely. Um, and having gone in guns blazing for the lift, it was at the second review that Karen, in her words, could see the jigsaw being pulled together and the jigsaw being Bruce. And, you know, now we're going to, to, to start the lift in August, which will, I mean, anything that I've read about the lift is mind blowing. But the fact that Bruce has come on so much in two months without the lift, like, I'm really hoping, you know, and we were at a fam family wedding at the weekend and um, it would have been Paul's family that I guess Bruce wouldn't see as much. So I like to gauge what they say and what kind of things that they notice. And we were all in the one room and there must have been about, I'd say, you know, maybe 10 people in the one room. The Bruce of 12 months ago would have run for the hills. He would have gone to a different room. He would have, you know, not been interested. This, that, that would have been way too much for him. But Bruce of the weekend was literally standing in the middle of everybody going, hi, attention, please. <laughs> he he was talking to his auntie who he wouldn't have seen that often. But anytime he would see her, she'd be, hi, Bruce. And he wouldn't, hi, you know, and he wouldn't engage with her to walking up to her like eye contact straight away going, I went to the bus station. And then going, mummy, get the phone uh, and get the, the pictures. Get my pictures, mummy. And like barking orders at me in front of everyone. And like, like, was, glo like was basking in the attention of everyone. Got out the phone. He was like, this is the bus wash. And, you know, to Lorna, to, 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 to his aunt. She just could not believe it. She said, Bruce normally just ignores me. And, you know just the biggest thing is it's the want it's it's the motivation you know we had been doing therapies he had been getting better you know the speech was was increasing you know the all the all the strategies were working but I always felt that Bruce was kind of just you know doing because that's what we were doing what I feel has happened to date is that it's ignited in Bruce a want 
to do all of that that we're trying to make him do that we're trying to like I'm trying to teach him how to socialize you know whereas now I think he just wants to socialize and he actually likes it you know like it's it's phenomenal I felt Karen has just been there you know every step of the way anytime I had a question like Donna if Donna wasn't there yourself you know someone would come back to me there would be it was like having a little blanket of security around me because you know I was finally getting reassurance that I was doing the right things and actually finally beginning to see things were working you know and um, even things like the brushing program <laughs> first at the review Karen rocks up with this what I thought I thought was like a hairbrush and I was like what are we going to be doing with this and for the for the first few weeks you know I made such a big deal of the brushing I was like Bruce it's time for your brushing and it was just pandemonium he's like no I don't want any of this you know whatever and I said that to Karen at her first review and um she was kind of like in in her own way like stop making such a big deal of it you know and she took the brush at the review center and Bruce was like playing and Karen was just like brush 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 and I was like Helen, like, why are you making such a big deal of this? It doesn't have to be this hard, you know? And that's what I started doing. I was like, oh, time for the brushing, la, la, la. And he'd be playing and be brushing. And now it's, do you want to do the brushing, Bruce? Oh, yes, please. He sits down and he holds out his arm. And then the squishies, you know, the, the uh, joint compressions, like. And then he has to do, we do a jump of joy after it. And he jumps to joy and he goes, hooray, jump for joy. And just like, but who would have told you about brushing? Like, like, how would I have known about brushing? You know, why didn't any of the OTs that we had seen even mention it, you know? The autism school, preschool that he's in now, um, all of the other kids, I think, are much more severe than Bruce. So we decided to, because Bruce is getting on so well, to move him to um, a school to put him into, it's still a unit, it's a preschool intervention unit in a school. But the, the one thing that it has going is that um, Bruce will have access to mainstream kids. Because I think sometimes Bruce would see kids and he actually wouldn't understand really, first of all, that they spoke because all of the other kids, you know, are nonverbal in a school um, and have been the whole year, you know. Um, to him being a little unsure when kids were talking to him. So I'm hoping now this, you know, this move in September will be a good one for him. Because honestly, the way things are going, like I would love Bruce to be mainstream, you know, and if he got support to do that, fantastic. If he could, you know, like I basically stopped working to, to work with Bruce, to be at home with him. And I think, you know, with the support of the Child Development Centre and, and Karen, I, I'm cautiously optimistic that, you know, and look, there's no cure. He's not going to magically whatever, but just what I have seen over the last couple of months, I just see a happier child. I see a child that wants to be with other people, that wants to engage, that actually it's turned into a little cheeky monkey he's having the like he's having the crack you know he's messing with me he's playing like little games like he's you know teasing me <laughs> like just like personality you know and like like that thing where i see him every day you know when i look back at videos even of his first birthday second birthday third birthday I just, I just see how far he's come, you know, and what infuriates me is that nobody tells you these things. That is my main bugbear about this whole thing. Like, we should have got a diagnosis and we should have been told, um, go see somebody like Karen, somebody, you know, 
like I just feel you're very much on your own with this and as I said Karen was the first person who I felt like we had a plan with I felt like we could do something about this we could help Bruce and Karen doesn't promise miracles but you know all I can do as Bruce's mum is get Bruce to the best that he can be whatever that is you know to give him the best chance at happiness in life and you know to just to to experience all everything you know because I felt like he's been locked away and you know and I felt so powerless a lot of the time not understanding how to help him and just I think what the program with Karen has done is, is it's just opened him <laughs> to to the point that all the therapies I think we're still doing obviously but that they're just really beginning to to just to work to you know like we had a craniosacral session there the other day and like I just I really feel Bruce was just yeah okay I kind of understand this I'm I'm you know I want this and like that maturity there or something and you know and things as as, as I said like like speech wise I would be like a clown around here da, 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 and the speech and the blah and you know you'd be worn out and the repetition and repetition and repetition and you know n- not getting anything back whereas now I'm still doing all of that but actually I'm beginning to see it go, it go in if I had any advice for, for new parents, it, it will be, you know, don't wait. Don't, don't, don't wait for things to get better. Don't wait for the HSE. Don't wait for a diagnosis. Start now because, you know, the brain is so malleable up until whatever age it is that the progress that I've seen in two months is more progress that I've seen in Bruce since, the, you know, it's more than the last 18 months. And um, what's more is, I feel hope. For the first time probably since diagnosis. <laughs> Thank you again for your support. And if you like what you've heard, and I hope you do, please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is called Opening Your Mind.